Today's tech tip is about a free app and website called Seesaw that works on both Chromebooks and iPads. So why would you want to use Seesaw? Well, first of all, it's an online portfolio of student work and student voice. And for our real littles, uh, teachers can easily gather student work and save it here, or uh, even kindergartners and up can create online portfolios themselves. So those online portfolios do not need to be all digital work by any means. Uh, but it can be analog work as well, photos of their work, video conversation, as well as mixed media. Now, it also is a little bit like social media where students see a feed of each other's work and you can allow them to post feedback, give each other a like, and so there's a little bit of motivation to have that real life audience as well as they can share their work beyond the classroom with families. And I know I've heard from parents that they get super excited when they see that update on their phone, a notification that their student has shared something within Seesaw, and they feel like they have this little window or portal into the classroom, and it really allows for conversations for families when the kid gets home because they have some evidence of what they've been up to. So to start, there's actually two websites. Web.seesaw.me is the website where you're going to go to get started as a teacher, so let's go there now. So this website we really only need to go to to find out more information about the program. Uh, here's an example of some student work. It's a photo. So they took a photo of their, their physical work. Then they used the edit option to add some uh, captions and titles and then recorded their voice to tell a little more about it. It's also great with math manipulatives because um, it's just a way to save student thinking. So they created their physical models, then they were able to annotate over the top, record some labels, and then you can also record voice. So to get started, we're going to go to the top and sign up for free. So we'll go ahead and click on I'm a teacher. And one of the nice things is if we scroll down, we can sign in with Google. So that's one less username and password to remember. So now we have an account, we're going to create a class. Now the website you want to use for the app is app.seesaw.me. And so I'm already logged in here. And if you want to create more classes, you're just going to click on your name. I can create a new class. We'll call this period one. And we'll say this is a sixth grade class and hit the check mark. Now there's a couple things uh, that you want to think about. So what type of devices are your students going to be using? So we're going to look at two scenarios. So one scenario would be if I have shared iPads, um, I'm going to have the kids download the app called Class for Seesaw. And we're going to look at these settings here in just a second, but you're going to want to use this shared device option and that's going to give you a QR code. So let's look at that now. So I'm in period one. I'm going to click on the settings icon. And if I go down to student sign in mode, if I'm using iPads, I really want to use this shared device and confirm that change. So now what happens when I click out of here, I'm going to click on students. And it says, do you want students to sign in using their Google account? If I'm using the iPads, I'm going to say no. Um, this is probably some of our younger students. We're going to say these are shared devices. And here I can add student names. So I've got a kid, couple kiddos. And when I hit OK, so this is my QR code. It says my QR code won't change. I would copy this icon and print it, and I would just put it in your classroom on the wall, on the iPad cart, um, anywhere where students can walk up and scan it, because once they scan it, now they're in your classroom, and they can add the work to their own folder. If you are using Chromebooks, uh, we're going to have a slightly different scenario. So there we added students for shared iPads. For Chromebooks, students are going to use that website, that app.seesaw.me, and for the sign-in mode, we're going to choose email and Google. So let's click on the settings icon again and we're going to go down and we're going to choose this third one. Email and Google. Confirm change. And we'll go ahead and X out. Now when we click on students we have this code that we can give them just like Google Classroom. So uh, I would copy this code and let's look at it from a student perspective. For students to join your class they could either with an iPad or phone use the Seesaw app and manually enter the code or it's just easier to have them scan the QR code and automatically join your class. If they're using the Chromebook, it's app.seesaw.me. They're going to click on I'm a student. Have them go ahead and click on sign in with Google. 
now I'm signed in, I'm going to go ahead and enter that code and join the class that way. So now we've got our setup taken care of, we can actually start to add some information to our journals. So as a student, I can click the plus sign and you'll see I have a lot of different options here. I can take a photo of myself, myself uh, with my work, just my work. I can add videos, drawings, a link to a website. This could be a link to my work in Google Drive. I can add a note. This is just going to be text or any file that's from my Google Drive or uploading from my computer if I'm on a different device. So I'm going to go ahead and I have a picture on my computer of a book I'm reading. So we've got the image there. I'm going to go ahead and hit check mark. And now once I have my image, I can continue to layer more media. So here I can have a caption if I want. And we'll see where that goes right at the bottom. Uh, labels are going to be able to be layered over the top of the item. So here I can just move the title and you can make change the font, all sorts of things there. Um, We'll go ahead and hit the check mark as soon as you're done with that piece. And here I can record my voice. And so we'll hit the check. Let's see. So now we're recording. So here I could tell a little bit about maybe why I chose this book. Um, and then when I'm all done recording, I'm going to hit the green check mark. And I can listen to that if I want to. And we'll go ahead and hit the check mark. I can continue to draw over the top, all sorts of ways I can interact with my content. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that in. So the nice part is now students in my class, other peers could like it, comment. And here I can also click to put it into a folder. And we'll look at how we create folders here in just a moment. But you can see without even a prompt from my teacher, students can add media to their own folders. So now we're going to look from a teacher perspective again about how to create some activities as well as a couple settings you're going to want to look at. So here I'm signed in as a teacher again and I'm going to click on the settings icon and if I go down below here there's a couple things you're going to notice. Do you want students to see each other's work? Uh, personally I think that's very powerful. Do you want new items to require your approval before other students can see them? And we'll look at that, what that looks like. See I have one unapproved post here. And if you, we also go into uh, student likes and comments, do you want students to be able to comment on each other's work? I think, again, that's very powerful. Do you want those comments to first go through you for approval? And do you want them to be able to like each other's work? So those are some things that you're going to want to make some intentional choices about. And we're also going to go down to folders to manage folders. And if you teach one subject, you might not want any folders at all, or maybe you do by different standards. Uh, here I have uh, the option of creating a new folder. So let's create a science folder. And that just gives uh, students the ability to organize their work into these specific journals. And so now we have those. Now we looked at the big green plus sign from a student perspective, but let's look at it from a teacher perspective for just a moment. This would be uh, mostly where you're going to either create, find, or share an activity. Now you don't need to have an activity for certain students to turn in work to their journal. For example, you could just write on the board or stand up in front of your class and say, hey everybody, can you go take a picture of your science journal and tell me uh, record your voice uh, telling me a little bit about the variables and label your work that's on your page. So those could be audio directions that you give kids or again on the whiteboard. If you want to create an activity, you can click the plus sign. You can browse the activity from other teachers and the nice thing about this is you can filter down to the grade level. Maybe I'm looking at fifth grade and I want to find a science activity and I can go through here and you can see that they've added templates. They have directions. The nice thing about the directions, they have all these icons here and there's directions I can play. So if this is something I want to hold on to, I kind of like this one, I'm going to click the heart and now it becomes part of my library. So your library are ones that you click the heart to favorite or ones that you've created yourself. Um, here was a fun turkey talk one we did for Thanksgiving.
and so it has these directions. Here's the template, the picture with all the little speech bubbles, and that's where students are able to add text over the top. So that's my template. Here's the directions. If I'm ready to share this with my students, I hit the share button. I can choose all the classes I want this to go to, and I'm going to share that with my students. You can also create activities by hitting create new activity. So you can see there's a title. You can type up your directions. This would be if you want to add your voice directions or other multimedia options, you can add those to the activity. And you can also add a template uh, to that student work so that just like the turkeys, they could type over the top. So now I'm logged in as a student and I see that activity and it tells me to use labels to create the dialogue and use my creativity and wit uh oh, um, and pick a friend to record the scripted conversation. So here, if I click add, I'm going to get a copy of that template and it said to use labels and that's where I can take these labels. I can move them around and you have all sorts of editing options. So I can move that around, change my style and uh, layer things. When I'm all done adding all of the turkey talk, that's where I would record with my friend. And then when we're done, we're going to turn that in. And if there were multiple uh, kiddos here, you could like each other's work. They can comment um, on each other's work and post. And here it has pending approval for both pieces. But like I said, you can have those automatically post if you prefer. So as a teacher again, here I see my students' stream of information, all of their posts. I can click on a single student and see just their work, um, which is the same work in this case. And then I can also click on the folder. So I have one item that's in reading fluency and um, you can see where you can pop in and out uh, just to see those e-portfolios. So the last part we're going to look at is going to be the family access. So to do that, we're going to go to settings. From here, we're going to click on families and turn on family access. So you have two options. You can print a paper invite. Just make sure that you're handing these out to the intended student. Each page is meant for a specific student to connect the family with their account or you can email all of your families the same email and what's going to happen is they will choose their student from the list of names in the class and then you will need to approve those requests to make sure the right parent is getting with the right student. Now on the, te on the parent side for that family access, each student can have up to 10 family members associated with their account and that's great for parents step parents, grandparents, they can really have this community, uh, this audience that's looking at their work. And if they have a smartphone or tablet, the parents are going to want to download Seesaw for families. And that way they get those notifications every time their student posts some work. So I do apologize about the length of this. You can see that there is a lot of parts to this. Um, but I do think it's a really powerful program. It is free. There are some paid options. If you were maybe as a building going to have online portfolios and wanted to keep these year to year, but the, the free version works great. Um, and if you want to continue to build on this, a couple other options would be one, uh, you can have this be an online blog and have a bigger audience than just your classroom and work on digital citizenship skills. The other piece would be, it, um, if you're using other apps or websites to create student work, this can really be a hub. So for example, if you wanted to use a book creator to create a book, the kids could post it in here and share it. This is the hub then again for families or the classroom blog. If you're using online tools like the Math Learning Center and Screencastify, students can share that work through this and again use it as a hub. Thank you so much.